Welcome to the National Gallery here in Trafalgar Square in the center of London. I'm here with this magnificent painting painted in the 15th century by an Italian painter, Masaccio. And it shows St. Jerome and John the Baptist. And we're here at the time of the Feast of St. Jerome. In fact, next year will be the 1,600th anniversary of his death. And that's a very remarkable moment to remember. And I'm here because I want to introduce and invite you to take part in a new initiative being put forward by the bishops of England and Wales for a special year in which we come to study, reflect on, and love the scriptures a bit more. We're calling it the God who speaks. And we start here with St. Jerome because he is one of the greatest figures in the story of the Catholic Church and the Bible. He was born in the fourth century and started in Rome and he learned his Greek so that he could translate the New Testament into Latin from the Greek original. And he gave his life to this task. And often people say that his work was inspired. They often depict him with angels, as it were, almost dictating to him. He lived an ascetical life. He lived in the Syrian desert for quite a while. And he worked in a cave in Bethlehem, which you can still visit if you go on pilgrimage to the Holy Land. But let's look a bit more closely at this picture. First of all, the two characters. There's Jerome and John the Baptist. Jerome highlighting, pointing us to the importance of the Scriptures in order to understand our faith and the person of Jesus. John the Baptist, of course, the one who announced his presence when he took our flesh and appeared on this world. So they make, in a way, a perfect partnership. John the Baptist being the herald of Jesus and Jerome being the loudspeaker of the scriptural word, which is the word of God, which is in flesh in Jesus. But look, first of all, at some of the light in this painting. We can see, for example, the light falling across the open Bible that St. Jerome holds. And it's open on the beginning of the book of Genesis. So to say from the very beginning, this light of Christ casts its way through the whole of the Bible, the watermark almost of the biblical text. And the light just catches his fingertips the hand that has written the translation and the commentary on the Bible with such divine assistance. And then in his other hand, we have this image of the church with the light falling on the doorway of the church in saying, come in, come in, come in and understand how the life of Christ presented in the scriptures is unfolded in the life of the church. And these two go together, They're one in either hand, the scriptures and the church. Saint Augustine always insisted for us that we do not have a Bible unless the church gives it to us. And so they go hand in hand, and we learn to enter and interpret this great gift of God in the scriptures in and through the church. And then the light goes across the painting to catch the figure of John the Baptist. And he is there with that unmistakable gesture pointing to the cross, pointing to the symbol of Christ. And it's as if to say all of this only makes sense when it is aimed and directed and is fruitful in our relationship with Jesus. So the scriptures, the church, the saints, 
they lead to the cross of Christ. We have here Jerome dressed as a cardinal. He never was a cardinal, but I am. And so there's a little similarity in the way that we are dressed here. But he, as I say, was a hermit, but he was given this title, I think, in some of the mythology of the church, some of the surrounding um, fables and enrichment of the story of a saint. Maybe in a similar vein, we have the lion, always associated with St. Jerome. The story being that when he first went into the desert, the lion was there with a great thorn through its paw. And Jerome removed the thorn, maybe out of that paw there. And the lion then became his companion, protecting him and moving around with him always. And then another little detail. We see in the ground here that it's marked with rich flowers. And it's a lovely, lovely indication for us that when we stand in the ground opened for us by the scriptures in the church, then our lives can seriously become fruitful. We have that sense of new life. We have that sense of a spring in life. We have that sense that our life can flower in beauty and in fruitfulness. So there, it is a very beautiful picture and it helps us to get started on our reflections during this period, this year and a bit, till next December, December 2020, in our project of the God who speaks, who speaks to us in the lives of the saints, who speaks to us in the life of the church, who speaks to us in the Holy Scriptures, and who speaks to us most of all in Jesus his only begotten Son.